So now you should have the live window open and will look something like this. If you have a slightly later version, it's possible I've added or changed some of the columns, but all of this should still apply. The most important part of this window is the right-hand column labeled master. This is the one you'll use to trigger cues and for everything, in fact. I would recommend you don't touch anything to the left of the master column. If you were to trigger some of the sounds by clicking a triangle here, it would only trigger the sounds and not the click track, or vice versa if you clicked in the click track column. So basically it's useless. Don't click any of these triangles. Only use these. Now you'll notice there's a letter or a number out to the side of some of these cues, particularly the ones in blue. Those correspond to letters and numbers on the keyboard, and in fact that's what I use in performance and rehearsal to trigger these cues. For instance, this reset everything cue. You could click the orange triangle, or if I press the letter L, it does the exact same thing. Same for Q1, Q2, Q3, etc. The numbers 1, 2, 3 across the top of the keyboard correspond to those, and that's what I use in performance. If you look at this top here, Reset Everything does exactly what it says. I recommend using it uh, immediately before the performance, and whenever you stop in rehearsal, just press the letter L. That stops all the sound, resets the mic on the clarinet uh, to zero, and basically returns us to a clean slate. If you just press the space bar or the stop button, it will stop the sounds, but if you then start at some other point, sometimes it acts a little strange. So I recommend you just use that. If you look along the top here, you'll see a status bar full of information, all of which you can ignore. This counter here with the measures and beats will run even when you press reset everything but it does not correspond to the bars and beats in the piece. Uh, so you could ignore that even if it's running, it doesn't matter. The faders along the bottom adjust the volume of each of those tracks. Now in most cases you won't need to touch any of them. If you do, probably it will be the clarinet channel. This is where the clarinet sound comes in and goes through the effect. This little triangle right here adjusts its maximum volume. So I usually leave it just a little bit below, but in every hall uh, and with every microphone and set of equipment, it's different. So you can use this. If you're not getting enough effect back in the speakers, you can raise this. Or if you're getting way too much, lower it. The orange dot at the bottom shows the actual volume at this point in time. So if the orange dot is way down here, that means there's no sound coming through regardless of what you do with this triangle. If you press the letter A, which I've set to activate the clarinet mic, and you'll see the orange dot is gone. It's actually underneath this triangle, and we have effect coming through. You can see that green uh, signal strength right here shows how much is coming in. The clarinet panic cue right under it, you should never need to use that. That's only in case you start getting some feedback or something is going crazy with the clarinet mic and performance. You can press the letter S, or this triangle here, and that just turns off the clarinet mic. That's only for emergency use. In fact, I've never had to use it, but I just put it there just in case. In performance, once you turn on the clarinet mic at the beginning of the fourth movement, you don't have to do anything. It's all automatic. That's a basic overview of the live window. Um, you can adjust the size of it to fit your screen. It won't affect the operation of it. Uh, so that's purely for your own aesthetic comfort. And those are the basics of the live set.